Hey guys, it's Matt. If you're driving or at work, try to glance at this image, and then the next image will come in about 35 seconds, and then I'll just cycle these two images back and forth. We'll talk about this topic for maybe 10 minutes. It is then going to evolve into like a variety show, but you won't need to really see the other images. Just kind of glance at this one and one that will come up in 25 seconds if you're driving or at work with your TPS reports, and you'll be good. Thanks to Daniel, thanks to Xavier for the first two submissions regarding what was talked about in the last video, the sense of a whole reality that tries to make us feel as small as possible stands in front of a gigantic machine, uh, the likes of which in terms of scale and scope is incomprehensible. It's all of this machine, this not nilk, whatever you want to name it, is all of society. It is all of culture. It's all of the tens or hundreds or billions of minions that follow along and go along and read its bullet points. And like my aunt push, push forth its narrative. Oh, you, you haven't rented the movie. You sit outside, boy. You sit outside. They're all minions to a degree. A minion isn't just George Soros or Henry Kissinger. It's those that follow the bullet points of the news. They're all going along with it. They're all the walking dead. And by the way, of course, if a few of you are sketching something out or need another week, I'm just showing the first two to get this started. I know three or four more submissions will come in or people like, I don't expect Paul to do another bathroom scene. He's already done a lot for me. But if you're sketching it, I know that takes time. You haven't, you know, yet you have time. When they all come in, or even a few more, we'll do this again, and um, we'll revisit. And it's possible that the simplest, like, stick figure drawing can capture, could potentially capture what I'm trying to capture here better than anything else. And for years, I mean, we, we've all seen it, we've all thought about this in a different way, but years ago, what really stood out, like reality can't hide any longer, was the fact that nothing ever gets fixed, or from a um, medical perspective, you know, where are the cures? And look, why isn't this technology making my life easier? Why isn't this great thing they're promising over here translating into anything? Why do we just spin our wheels? In fact, it's just the opposite. Whatever the technology comes, it just makes our life busier. It never uh, helps. It always hurts. What's that from? What movie is that? That's from Pulp Fiction. Um, pro oh, it's about pride. Yeah, pride. F pride, it never helps. <laughs> it only hurts. Say it. I go down in the fourth. Sorry. Um, anything, any bullshit gadget, it doesn't ever help. It just makes our life more miserable. So years ago, I was right in thinking that what stands before us is like one thing. Even though if you get too close to it, no, this is just first responders over here. And this is just a government agency over here, and the, or the military, or this is Hollywood. It is, if you back up, it's one thing. And it, without any part understanding how the whole works, it is all working together to do those simple one or two sentences to a real spiritual human being. And in this image, which is Xavier's, in this one I've zoomed in, on the smallness, we are very small in this place, real spiritual beings compared to this system that does deserve one name, like not milk. I'm glad I came forth with that, as dumb as it is, because it, it's one thing with millions of moving parts and buttons and levers and sniveling things <laughs> like Henry Kissinger and all working as one. And even even the high-level minion creeps, I don't think they even understand the oneness of it. But who knows, right? Who knows what George Soros... Or, to me, it, you know, I've always said, if their mug is on the news, their ugliness is on the news, th that's a lower-level minion, if you, if you know its name on CNBC and BS like that. But it works as one. And, you know, just seeing this is so um, powerful to protect ourselves, to put the armor on. And this is um, Daniel's image to walk away from it. You know, now it's, well, he has the magenta 
at the top of the, the machine, all the TVs in the bottom, the endless buttons and levers. There's a wizard somewhere with a little curtain and a little dog trying to pull the curtain back. And it's like, this one expresses our attitude of, you know what? You know, okay, we've been fooled for decades, but no longer, you know, screw you. But we do live inside of it. Okay, we do live inside of it. Uh, Kiara, who I've mentioned several times, who took the World's Fair pictures at Flushing Meadows, where the tennis is, Flushing Meadows Corona Park, pulled over the side of the road, risked her life. <laughs> and that, that crazy New York traffic taking those pictures for us. She saw some signs on the bathroom. You know that that Bruce stuff? Not Kind of like Bruce's yams. Maybe they sell Bruce's yams at Aldi, but... She says, I, I saw some things. I don't, I'm not going here anymore. And I just emailed her back like 15 minutes ago. It's like, Kiara, continue to go to Aldi. You know, we live inside this machine. We can't completely isolate ourselves from it. If you don't like certain things that are on the door of the bathroom at Aldi, like you, the giant grocery store across town, you don't think that's going to be part of the nut milk system as well? If you have the means or money to go out to the farm stands and completely cut yourself off, then that's wonderful. But most of us, since we've been involved in it so long, and we've only, from a time perspective, only recently woken up to it versus all the time we've been living in the middle of it, it's hard to completely isolate, you know, uh, at this point, uh, unless you are you do have that nice cardboard box <laughs> designed and that mountain top picked out. So the first grade truth or perspective through the fifth grade truth or perspective, and we all went through it, has the tendency to focus on the, you know, the obvious evil factions and elements or the parts, the real ugly blackhead pimples that stick out on the not nilks back and face. And you say, oh, what's this thing over here, B Builder Burger <laughs> group? I'm going to do it. I cannot do it. Welcome to Builder Burger, home of the Builder Burger. I'm going to do it every time. One of the dumbest ass movies of all time. Um, I almost said Builder Burger, Good Burger. If you like certain scenes in Good Burger like I do, you have a really juvenile sense of humor like me. The point is, focus on Bilderberg, focus on Bohemian Grove. Oh, what's this? The Trilateral Commission and Barney Miller, one of the original uh, truth drop scenes. Oh, the other heroes at Barney Miller, like that wasn't all laid down on purpose, talking about this crazy man comes in and says, this, these, all these um, groups like the Trilateral Commission, Barney Miller, rule the world. And so, hey, the, the first grade through fifth grade truth, or this is all natural. They're way better. They get the awards versus... My aunt and the guy down the cul-de-sac, the people that think there's just nothing going on and you're a conspiracy person for even questioning it. But see, that's where the graduated animal farms come in. And they focus on Bohemian Grove. And they go in and they film it, right? Oh, yeah, sure, just snuck in and film it. And then they um, talk about Trilateral Commission. And then they talk about Bilderberger. And they talk about World Health Organization. And then they'll focus on Cla Santa Claus Schwab and all the... E you can't just... if the, the goal the, g -g 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 -g, the goal of the graduate animal farms is to focus just on the zits. When if you back up far enough per these images, what's incredible about it, it's the whole. It is one whole with a few isolated people like us that are trying to jump off the back of the Titanic. The graduate animal farms want you to focus on trilateral commission or whatever, because then that gets you in the wrong place. It is a whole system here. It's all of culture for the as it's presented by their media. Okay, if it's like kids down the block doing a puppet show, that's not all of their culture. That's that's the expression, the normal expression of of a embodiment's art or uh, creativity and imagination. You know, even those damn little Von Trapps, Leo, 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 the lowly goat, that's natural and normal. But everything that comes through their systems, all of art, culture, the news, politics, government agencies, military, you know, infrastructure, all of it is working together for that same one sentence. Distract an individual from understanding what it was really came on this earth to do for itself. So in this example, if the good burger, Builder Burger, is the burger itself, well, it puts fries on the plate. It has all sorts of toppings and fries. Its fries is to 
put down on that same spiritual individual helplessness, hopelessness, and most importantly, all combines into powerlessness. And then that powerful being actually looks to it, looks up into the big bauble here, looks to it for rewards, for, for rewards, for status, for the Nobel Prize. For It needs most people, not us, most people look up into this giant disgusting infrastructure in this image here in the bobble, and they need it for its rewards. The NFL leading rusher, I've used this example a bunch of times, he'll, at 75 years old, he's got two bad knees, he never had them replaced, he's rocking back and forth on the porch in West Texas. He's got the ranch right next to the secondhand Lions people, and he thinks he did something in life. He got a rushing title, then he got the Hall of Fame. He got the rewards from from this system. They're all false rewards, every one of them. If you are getting a reward or some sort of um, status symbol from this system, you know you've done it wrong, boy. Honey, what's the matter with you? Honey, you've been kind of acting strange all day. I know when something's wrong. Talk to me about it. What, what's the matter with you? Yeah, you're right. There is something wrong. I'm a mess. I don't know what, what to do, Meg. They're, they're giving me the key to the city. No, that's not wonderful, Meg. <laughs> I thought at one point in my life, I thought that was wonderful. They give me the key to the city for all the work I've done for the mayor's office and all the contracts and federal money I've brought in to the city and everything I've done in my career working with all these different facets of government. But now I see what's really going on. If I if I get the reward and accept the reward, I'm screwing myself. What do I do, Meg? So for those listening to the sound of my voice that have received a high-level, not milk reward, we have good advice for you at the end of this segment. Those listening that have received a key to the city. There are many of you listening that have received Nobel Prizes. How about New York Times best-selling author? That stinking not milk reward. Those listening that have received Oscars, the Phallus of Osiris, Time Magazine, Person of the Year, Hall of Fame for the NFL or the NHL or Major League Baseball, which you gave about $5 of your salary every month to your charity. Even employees of the month at Harvard or MIT, there's even hope for you. Yeah, you. What you need to do when you, first of all, let's back up. When you got your not milk reward, you were so proud of yourself. Oh, you just stared in the mirror and combed your hair and stared in like the American psycho staring at himself in the mirror. You were so proud of yourself. Your family was so proud. Your wife and kids were so proud. But now you're starting to see, uh uh-oh, that's a permanent vacation under the dragon's wing when you accepted that reward. But there's still time to repent. I'm getting text messages from several Nobel Prize winners that they would like to repent, but how do they... Of course, I was going to get to that. How do you go about repenting? Well, whatever you received, whatever not milk reward you received, you need to return to sender. If possible, you need to return it yourself. Wrap it up, whatever you received, in a little blanket like a baby. Put it on the doorstep, whoever gave it to you. If that's not possible, put it in a gigantic box or envelope and mark return to sender. You need to shun it. Didn't you see witness? John Book, he was with Rachel. He says, Rachel, if you get shunned (laughs) by the congregation, I can't sit at table with you. I cannot speak with you. You need to shun that shit that not milk reward. Just like, what is it, Eli Lapp and Witness? You cannot speak of it. You have to return it to sender. If your family brings it up, you have to look the other direction like you didn't even hear what the fuck they were talking about. You need to completely disassociate yourself with it. That is the first step in repentance, sir. Now, a real person, as they begin to wake up to a degree to come in to understanding what they're all about, if they have and they need to repent, they have received one of these not milk awards over time, they will grow uh, increasingly uncomfortable with it. It'll become like having a Ouija board in the house. If you're a real... I agree, not to, Matt, how many real people have an Oscar? Have the, I agree, not many, but it's possible, okay? It's possible that if you live in Duluth or something, you got the key to the city or something, you're still a, a real person, still a real boy, Pinocchio. But that reward, whatever that is probably in the shape of a pyramid or something, sitting, you have it on displayed under a light or something, 
in an etagere, whatever the heck that is, you um you would grow uncomfortable with it, like having a Ouija board in the house. And then you need you know you need to get rid of it. Now the opposite would be I'm showing this example, this Maybach car. I'll bring that in in a second. But the opposite would be, of course, Obama's Nobel Peace Prize. If you are a complete minion of this system, and no chance to ever return real boy Pinocchio, you love the not milk rewards, applause, and admiration. I'm sure wherever o- Obama's roaming around the world, he probably brings it with him. He carries it under his arm when he, when he before he bo- book us into the room. He probably carries the damn thing with him. He's so proud of the Nobel Peace Prize. But a real person will start, basically it'll become like kryptonite to Superman. That's how you know you're a real person. Here's another example. There's, I, when I used to, in 2005, 6, 7, I stopped watching the news. And I thought, you know, as I eat lunch at this little 13-inch television or whatever in the kitchen, put the damn news on. I'm so sick of the news. Just put the damn stock market on CNBC. At least if I watch that for a few years, I'll learn something. Little did I know, you learn nothing. It's all a bunch of BS. But the point is, as I was watching CNBC for years, I figured I'll pick up on the stock market, which was always a disaster for me. There was this trader. I forget his name. He was one of these original guys on that show, Fast Money. And he then, he, no, he's, I think he's on the five still. He became like a regular um, host on, on the regular news show. Most boring guy in the world. He kept getting promoted for some reason. When he was a trader, he was deemed the Maybach, <laughs> the Maybach man of the year. Now, it seems like Mercedes bought them. I, I'm, I've never looked into this for 10 years. Now it's called Mercedes Maybach. These things are like $400,000 or something. He was deemed the Maybach man of the year. In addition to trading, what is he making a million dollars a day? I think they gave him a goddamn Maybach. Now, he's not a real person or he's so far under the dragon's wing, there's no hope for him. To this day, I'm sure he's still thrilled that he is a Maybach man of the year. But I'm saying the the few real people that are left listening to the sound of the words coming out of my mouth, we if we we don't want these rewards, we don't want any system or not milk rewards, and if we ever got them, we will shun them and return them. Okay, I found the guy. This is the guy, Eric Bowling. <laughs> Look at this loser, Eric Bowling. Matt, you just jealous. I, my on my prior self, I was jealous of him I, the self that came out of 2002 three four uh, oh this look at this trader here maybach man of the year look this guy is following a script it just doesn't make sense anyway I, I, let's not spend too much time this is the guy okay he's this big shot cnbc presents this guy as a big shot he's down on the floors trading whatever he's making his million dollars a month or whatever maybach man of the year all but then he starts to become like a fox news or cnbc no cnbc first contributor he starts doing that fast money show and all the and the, but then he like works into like a regular anchor at Fox, okay, well, what, what is, first of all, he's boring as all heck. The guy has no personality. He doesn't speak very well. You're like, what's going, it's, you get the sense it's like one of these, like, insiders or something. Like, he's like, he was born a Rockefeller or something. Uh, who knows? This guy's story just never made any sense to me. But a lot of the stories of people that rise up never made any sense. Anderson Cooper's makes perfect sense. He's a Vanderbilt. The old money never went anywhere. That makes perfect sense. But this, okay, let me just, two minutes or less, I'll wrap this this up. Okay, it makes sense he's doing this little CNBC show because all their ego and they're arrogant and they want to be on TV and know and become famous. And he's still trading at the time. He's still making his million dollars a week. But then he goes and now he's a permanent full-time anchor or host of The Five where he's not on the trading floors anymore. It just doesn't make any sense. Why would he even want that job? If he's making so much money trading on the floors, okay, Matt, he made his money. Now he wants the fame. I, maybe that. Maybe they have to follow the same script. But the other thing is, why well, I think he must be connected in some way. Why would Fox hire him? He doesn't seem to have much personality. He has no presentation skills. He doesn't come across as all that smart or worldly. I'm just some asshole in a bedroom, and I mean, in the same damn sweatshirt. I'd run rings around this guy. But I I haven't thought about this guy for years, but it's like the same script over and over. 
I paused the segment a while back and I was just looking at the Wikipedia. I had no idea what I was find, what I would find. But it's the same thing over and over. I mean, look look at this. You probably can't read it, but or I'll read it to you. He went on to become the host of Fox News cashing in. <laughs> well, why'd you leave the trading floor? Then he did this and he did that and Fox News and then he wrote two books about Don, as a Donald Trump supporter, one wake up, <laughs> wake up America. Yeah, right. The swamp, Washington's murky pool of corruption and cronyism, and how Trump can drain it. Oh, we're still waiting for that, Eric, aren't we? But look at the script play out. It's the same shit for all these people. In September 2017, Bowling was ousted. <laughs> he was ousted. From Fox News, after the network conducted an independent investigation, after an article published in the Huffington Post reported that Bowling had sent unsolicited lewd photographs and text messages to three female colleagues. Oh, wasn't that the same thing that the whole, the manager over all of Fox News, he was ousted for sexual harassment. They all just keep making the same mistakes over and over. You could say he did a wiener. He, you did, Eric, you did an Anthony Weiner. Come on, man. It's a script. These guys, they, I don't know, Matt, why do they have to follow this script? I don't know. They're given rewards. They're given Girl Scout Thin Mints and rewards to start, and then they have to pay for it on the back end. Who the heck knows how these creeps do business? But it's like the same damn script every single time. Oh, yeah, he didn't know not to send texts of his, uh, he did a, um, what do you call that? It's a Brett Favre. It's you. It's an Anthony Weiner. It's a Brett Favre. Oh, sure. He's not. He. You know, he's not going to be smart enough. To, no, it's a script. They seem to put the same type of people through the same type of thing over and over again. Bill O'Reilly just popped into my head. Well, there was some sort of sexual allegations against Bill O'Reilly, and he was ousted. It's so bizarre, guys. It's so weird. How? Who would ever? I mean, there's the creeps. There's real people. But there's so many real people that choose the rewards and they, they, they choose to be on the side of the creeps. You know, how many millions or how many real people there are here, but why so many people choose to be on this side or that side with the creeps? It's just bizarre. Everybody lines up for the rewards. It's just bizarre. Thank goodness we see what we can see today, guys. Okay, coming out in a day or two, or maybe Friday or tonight, I don't know, Netflix, all quiet on the Western Front. Anybody saying, here we go again. This is one of these things that the Not Milk system loves to, quote, artificially carry through time for whatever reason. We'll speculate that on the back end. But, okay, a German book was written around 1929. I'm not going to try to, try to p pronounce the German. All quiet on the Western Front. Okay, then in the 30s or early 30s, it was a, a movie, a famous movie, I believe black and white. Then it was made into another movie again in 1979. That starred John Boy. John Boy from the Waltons. Good night, John Boy. Is that what they did to him on the, on the Western Front? Good night, John Boy. And now here we come, here we go again. Now everybody in the world knows All Quiet on the Western Front. We learned about it. In, it's just, you know what? What I'm saying, what are you saying, Matt, for anybody new here? I'm saying for the fact that it's world known almost, I'm sure there's certain outer lying islands in the Philippines that have never heard about it, but for, for how much everybody knows about it, is it that great? Really? Come on. Is it that great? Movie after every so many decades, it, have to keep, it keeps being revisited. Of course, there's a reason the Not Nilk loves this one. Shit, look what they went in this and sometimes see when it's a not milk beloved thing like this, it'll be good probably. They go to revisit Star Wars and they, they put that in the toilet. I said, I said that like the room. They, I said they put that into the toilet. I can't even speak right anymore. I've been doing that so long that room shit. There's some people in their bathtub firing rubber duckies and I want to tell them I hear you. Here's what they're yelling at me. I can hear it right now. Matt, it's not just about their love of All Quiet on the Western Front. It's their love 
and their continual need to push out the World War I story and the trench warfare story over and over and over and over. And this is just another excuse to be able to do it. Oh, let's, it's, so I, I hear you. Put the rubber ducky down, back away from the hot water. I hear you. For some reason, they must continuously push out the trench warfare, the whole World War I themes. And maybe they need an, well, we haven't visited all quiet, revisited all quiet on the Western Front for this many decades. Let's do this again. They just did it in Wonder Woman. Is that little segment in Bruce Willis's 12 Monkeys? There's five or six um, movies that maybe never made it to the theater, released direct to Amazon or Netflix over the past 10 years. There's World War I in color, the, the digitalization, which just doesn't look, I don't know, it looks too perfect to me. But I'm, I'm no expert at that. And what we should ponder is the bigger issue here is why does the not nilk, why is it in love with continuously pushing out this trench warfare, World War I themes and stories over and over again? To have any chance of figuring something out of this magnitude, of course, you know, I'm going to say we have to return to the absolute basics. So the first great truth will say, well, because it's fake, Matt, it's fake. No, it's not fake. I think the whole story of the trench warfare, the way it's presented in media, has been overblown. There's no, it, it's not fake to me. It was horrific. You would want to be in there standing in mud in the, it's not fake. It's been overblown, in my opinion. Even if you watch the old, the digitalization, or they take the old World War I uh, videos and they put it into color, or they put it into HD, some of the quotes from those guys are like, they don't seem that shell-shocked, okay? The, I've watched some of those movies. The, it, I'm not saying it's it's good being out there, but think of the scene in 12 Monkeys, or the, I think they, they, they take this, and they, in terms of its, its horror, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy I wasn't out there, don't, again, one last time, don't get me wrong, but it was probably not as, it, it's, we just it, picture hundreds of miles of these trenches, it probably wasn't as extensive, in other words, it's simply probably overblown. Now, why is the not nilk so in love? In World War II is not much different, not in terms of being overblown, but in terms of how the constant stories in media and series on Amazon or HBO, Band of Brothers, and another movie. And what was the la the uh, what was the movie that came out not long ago? Um, oh gosh, the, the the ships had to they had to rescue the civilians with the ships, Dunkirk, it just, it's never ending. And you have to go into other places, like they might think, well, they can't, Matt, they can't pull off a world war anymore because of the information that's available. I don't know, whatever is being pulled off, pause, pause, Frosty the Snowman, Russia in, in Ukraine, that is the weirdest thing of all time. I have no idea what buttons and levers are being pulled, and you know, it's not all fake the way, but we've been over this, okay? It, but it is some weird hybrid. It's 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 not completely wag the dog, but it has tons of wag the dog elements. We've been over this. It's the one of the weirdest things of all time. I haven't looked at it for months, and I don't watch any news about it. But somebody might say, well, that's the best they can do. They they would love to do another world war, but they can't. Nobody would would. They know, people deep down know there's no bad guy. They can never cre recreate this. So some people might say, well, Matt, when, if they can create a good movie, and when they make these movies, they're typically much better than the other types of movies they make. They, they, someone might say that the subconscious or the unconscious really can't tell the difference between if they get immersed into a movie and reality. And whatever they get out of the real, real war, they're not getting the same thing out of reproducing or remaking All Quiet on the Western Front, but they're getting they're getting one half out of ten. Where if they get the real war going, they're getting ten out of ten. But they that's all they can do. So they keep making these same movies about World War Two and World War One and and whatever. They're getting something out of you know the human psyche being immersed in that as they're watching a film. It, is it simply it's simply louche? Maybe or fear energy. Who knows? But I think deep down they can't create another world war everybody knows there is no bad guy that they just they, they know they probably tried to do it or potentially dabbled in it with you know the whole job application 
and the teaism ism 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 prob prob quote quote problem and all they pray they and they dabbled in it and they thought you know they the whopper computer just kept coming back and saying people you can't go any further with this people ain't buying it you know so i don't know so they have to make up for it any way they can on screen i don't that's not fully taking the place from their perspective of real war but it's all like it's all they can do and it gives it away because a lot of these productions are very well done. No, they can't make a movie at all over here. But when it's about war or even uh, Top Gun 2 is about their baby, the Defense Department, the Pentagon. Oh, Top Gun 2 is wonderful. They can't make any other sorts of movies. They can't make a movie that inspires your, you know, a little bit of imagination or creativity. If it's about the Pentagon or the military industrial compact or war or trench warfare or Maverick or planes or the military industrial complex, then they're going to, then they'll do it right. Well, that proves they have the ability to do it right across the board. I don't have the answer here, but you know, a kindergarten or first grade truther will be like, Matt, as usual, you're overthinking it. The studios have to make money they are out of creative ideas. They can't create, as we've seen. They have to go back to the tried and true. Another movie about World War II. Another movie about World War I. Just, they need to make money. No, first grade truther. <laughs> if the Not Milk doesn't need money, they don't do anything for money first. That might be a nice little side of fries with the Builder Burger, but they don't do anything for money as a primary motivation. They don't need it. I'll just show this image for about two minutes if you're driving or something. You don't, you're not missing much here. I'll talk you through it. Greg's latest <laughs> creation, like people are like, I'm worried about him. What does he do? What is this? I say, Greg, Greg, yeah, thanks, Greg. It's like, this looks as much like not milk as anything that we've ever conceived of before. What I like about this is not milk is the whole of the corruptor. It's like we talked about in the first five minutes coming in. It's all the systems and aggregate parts working together. Aggregate parts, just go with it. Working together, buttons and levers, all working together without each individual or each individual system even knowing their part in the participation of the whole. Was that a sentence? Whatever. Each part doesn't even know what they're, what they're doing. So we're given this whole false array of bad guys. Matt, you're making up words. and this, I'm doing the best I can here. I'm losing it a little bit. But just go with me. I'm not going to re-record this. It puts out false bad guys. No, you truthers. Look, point over here. Here's a bad guy. Here's a Lex Luthor for you to point at. Here's an Ar Here are the Archons and the Anunnaki and the secret societies and these people at the Rand Corp. And all these bad guys it puts out because ultimately the bad guys probably more, if you could see it, it's more like something like this. Whatever this is, who knows? You know, if you could, if you could, not book us into the room, if you could step through interdimensionally, you'd probably see something like this. Not the bad guys we were given on purpose to chase after as false breadcrumbs. Maybe that Geordie Rose's D-Wave in some way communes with something, this thing. I don't know. We think, I've been joking that it's just a snow cone machine, but who knows? Maybe you go in and say, Jordy, can I borrow your D-Wave for us? He says, sure. He comes in, would you like a snow cone? What flavor would you like on your crushed ice? And you, you walk through the doors, and there's a raccoon in there, as I said, on a bike. And, you know, it's absolute zero, so you don't want to touch that, but it's probably just a big old Maytag refrigerator. But assuming it, it does communicate interdimensionally, you put your head through a little little box that looks like a microwave oven they've converted into something that the D-Wave can use. You, the, the ultimate bad guy is probably something, like, inconceivable here. Like that. It's a, people talk about AI. I'm starting to come around that it is something like this. I know for sure it's not a bad guy that we've been taught through the graduated animal farms to point at, to latch on to, okay? If certain secret groups and societies, that they serve it. It is not the end. But there's no point in trying to find the bad guy. We've been over this a million times. It would want that endless chase. It doesn't, I'll tell you what it doesn't want, that thing there. It doesn't want W-O-I, bout, yours, it doesn't want woe about yourself. It doesn't want you working on yourself. It wants, it'll leave you stinking breadcrumbs so you chase after it. All right, guys, last segment. The University of Hawaii democide chart that I looked at, I don't know if I mentioned it or how I mentioned it in videos. I probably did a few times, 
But I looked at this, I don't know, seven or eight years ago. The website is still up. You don't need to see this. And you probably, if you, even if you can see it, it's too small anyway. So I'll walk you through it. But the reason I'm showing you this screen is when you go to the University of Hawaii website, of course, it's this beautiful website just like any other university has. But if you search on Google, University of Hawaii Democide, which let me just jump right to the point, shows that in the 20th century, 19 whatever, governments killed 262 million of their own people. I don't think it includes war. Governments, according to the University of Hawaii, killed 262 million of its own people in 1900 and whatever, the 20th century. I'm showing this one because it's just weird that it's like they like the truth has to always be out there, you know, for those that want to look for it. This is the way websites used to look in the 90s. It was just text with some boxes, some click on boxes. Who knows when this website was done? And it's still part of the University of Hawaii website, but it, of course, it, the theme of it, it, it looks nothing like the main parts of it. But if you search on Google, University of Hawaii Democide, you can find this page that they still allow, or it's still up, because maybe it has to be up. You know, that's the way the Not Milk does business. Okay, I know you still can't see it. If you scroll down, you can get the full chart. At the bottom, it says, this is associated with the University of Hawaii. This isn't just some, look some, Matt, this looks some website, <laughs> some dude in a hippie camp created in the late 90s. It's, no, it's the University of Hawaii. World total for 1900 to 1999, 000, and it says all numbers in millions. At the top, it talks about, on the top right, I don't think you can see it, Deca Mega Murder, 1900 to 1987. Then it says China, 70, I can barely read it, 76 million, mostly under Mao, of course, 50 to 60 million. USSR, to 61 million. There are a variety of countries mentioned here, not just the obvious ones like Mao's cultural, quote, cultural revolution, not just the obvious ones, and then a lot of things that aren't mentioned here. I mean, I don't think there's any sort of mention or calculation for civil wars, African civil wars. You just add, you could add millions and millions onto this if you broaden the definition a bit into Africa and other parts of the Middle East. So someone's like, well, Matt, why are we talking about this? Okay, this is somewhat interesting. But why are we talking about this? This is something that's always good to carry in your back pocket. Not physically, just remember the, the number. Just remember the 262 million in the 20th century, depending on who you're talking to or interacting with. Because it's from a reliable source from their perspective. It's from the establishment from their perspective. It's from the University of Hawaii, not Matt and Dave's website. So they can't argue it. And I've said this to a few people, and it is, they just get this weird look on their face. And it's not the reaction I would typically like, but you can, it applies to so many different things. Like people are talking about a, a government that loves you. Reminds me of Black Mirror, that episode. Monkey loves you. Monkey wants a hug. <laughs> Government loves you. Government wants a hug. There couldn't be anything harmful in the renting of the movie with Carl Weathers' Axe and Jacksonation. There, there, any, or the, whatever research that the Gates Foundation is doing um, in association, of course, with government ent entities and organizations as it always is, like with the CDC or World Health Organization, there couldn't be anything harmful. There, governments love their people. If you ever talk to anybody that just goes there for a second... I immediately follow with this, this information, something like this. Uh, sir, yes, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, let me, let me just interject for a second, sir. Be quiet. G see, I hear you, but governments killed 262 million of their own people in the 20th century. That wasn't too long ago. No, no, it's not war. You keep, you're going to say World War I. No, it's not war, sir. Did, did I misspeak? Listen to the words coming out of my mouth. They killed their own people. Governments killed their own people. Not according to Matt and Dave's website or some conspiracy. According to the University of Hawaii, sir, referencing other sources like Rutgers University. Is that illegitimate source, sir? Is that conspiracy craziness, sir? 
So you, now that you can't blow it off, what do you think about that, sir? I shouldn't be skeptical. I shouldn't have a, to apply a degree of scrutiny to what a government... Oh, I, I see what you're saying. They go the same scripts. They run the same scripts, 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 scripts. They run, oh, it couldn't happen here. Oh, I see. Oh, the, the, I see. This government is loving. Monkey loves you. This monkey wants a hug. This government... Lo oh, it can't happen in the West because Canada and the UK and Ireland and... The, the, these governments all... Australia, they love their people, but the others don't. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. I guess if somebody takes it there without a degree of impartiality they're so far gone matt come on come around come on sir they're going to be so far gone there's no point in mentioning this anyway i hear you it, i like keeping this information in my back pocket